What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're mostly going to be talking about Scream 5 and Scream 6 here in this video today. But before I get into that, I wanted to touch on these brief comments from James Cameron about an upcoming Terminator movie he started writing months ago, but has put it on pause because he's waiting to see how AI develops. So James Cameron, according to Rod Mercado, at the Dell Tech World, conference told the crowd that he started writing a new terminator movie three months ago but wants to see how ai shakes out before he goes any further now i was not in attendance there for any of you who are actually in attendance there you know this report to be true let me know down in the comment section below but my thoughts on this are james cameron being the sole writer of another terminator movie i think would be what is the best route to go instead of having a story by James Cameron, but then other people are crafting the screenplay. I would like to see James Cameron more involved with the story progressions of a Terminator movie for the first time in how many years since the last time he did this? Because Terminator 2 came out back in 1991 and yeah, there was a co-writer involved with Terminator 2, but not as many as we had with Dark Fate. So I would like to see a, a Terminator movie solely from James Cameron. And when he's saying he's pausing to see how AI develops, I'm thinking he might want to lean more into giving us a dramatic thought piece on the dangers of AI, which I can understand given the current climate we're in and how AI is being used to promote fear in a lot of ways that we're progressing too much with it and i think now more than ever would be a great time to have another great terminator movie we'll have to see how things turn out for that also this is like the first report we've had on a terminator project since james cameron updated us months ago that there were discussions of rebooting and reviving the franchise once again arnold i think has also stated he's done with the franchise but we'll see how this goes jumping into scream 5 and scream 6 now Liv schreiber who we know is Cotton Weary from the original Scream trilogy, recently had an interview with GQ, and it seems he regrets being asked or asking to be killed off in the beginning of Scream 3. Uh, his comments to GQ were, all I remember was thinking, you know, this guy's kind of a ham, Cotton. He likes attention. I think that was the piece that Kevin was interested in and sort of ran with. I think I said something like, everybody's getting their 15 minutes. Cotton wants an hour. At that point in my career, I didn't really fully understand the value of being in a franchise. To be frank, I was like, let me get out of this while I can. Get out while things are going well. And I just thought it would be fun to be one of the iconic kills from the top. I was working and doing a lot of stuff, a lot of other stuff in New York and theater and i was like how many times can i play this character and now i realize that you can play that character as many times as they want you to he said this about the recent movies he said i kind of suggested that they knock me off part of the device of the movies was that somebody in the first five minutes gets killed and we really don't expect them to be killed which now i'm kind of kicking myself because i would have liked to be i would have liked to be in the new screen films now the reason I thought that was interesting is because imagine a world where Cotton Weary was a part of Scream 5 and Scream 6. There's a lot of opportunities to reference Cotton Weary blatantly in Scream 6. And imagine just the dynamic you could have had between a character like Cotton Weary and Sam Carpenter, the daughter of the man who led to you dealing with a year of hell in your life. Uh, accused of things you didn't do, spending time in jail behind bars. But of course, one woman, Gail Weathers, believed your innocence and everything worked out for you. And you got the fame you solely wanted, the positive fame, to correct the negative fame that was not not even something you wanted. It was just kind of forced onto you by the actions of this girl's father. So they could have had a very interesting dynamic, Sam and Cotton, and then more specifically with Scream 6 and the whole subject matter behind wanting to assassinate Sam's character. I think they missed countless opportunities to reference Cotton Weary in the fact that they could have had some brief mentions of dialogue from the killers or at any point from any certain character referencing this angle they were going for about assassinating Sam's character to drop a line about Cotton Weary. Hey, you know, your dad did this to Cotton Weary back in the day. And what if Cotton was present to hear this? What if we had another situation where Cotton was kind of being convinced to join the side of the killers because of what Sam's dad did to him many years ago? Another Scream 2 callback, if you will. Uh, I just think, I think Leif Schreiber is kind of right. And I think a lot of people do agree that 
Cotton Weary's character had a lot of potential that wasn't fully fulfilled because of the way they put him after the events of Scream 2. Now, if he genuinely asked to be killed in the opening of Scream 2 or Scream 3, then so be it. Of course, he has a different thought process now. And I just don't I just don't really see the the reason reasoning. I, he stated his reason. I just don't see why he was in a thought process like that that early on in his in his life uh while he was participating in the screen franchise because yes cotton weary being in five and six i would have loved to have seen him interact with these new characters love to see him interact with sydney see that relationship blossom and turn into something beautiful the way we've seen sydney's relationship with gail blossom so getting to see her relationship with gail blossom getting to see her relationship with cotton blossom that would have just been even more special because of what she also has kind of contributed to that year of hell for cotton even though she regrets it and she is remorseful and she did apologize to him in a way at the end of scream 2 by giving him the fame he was seeking which i thought was a nice touch with the ending of scream 2 killing him at the beginning of scream 3 did seem kind of like wow we're gonna do all of that in scream 2 and then he's just gone out of the picture and we never really hear about cotton ever again after scream 3 it's as if he didn't exist <laughs> but leave schreiber I got to agree with his regret. I wish they didn't kill Cotton at the beginning of Scream 3 either. I wish that he would have been a legacy character. I wish he would have been involved in movies like Scream 5 and Scream 6. Hell, if he was still around, maybe you wouldn't have had to kill Dewey in uh, Scream 5. Because again, imagine a, a timeline of events where over the, over the course of these movies, Sydney's developing a close relationship to Cotton Weary. And something about cotton dying or something about cotton being injured in some sort of way could have been used as your crutch to get Sydney back into Woodsboro instead of killing Dewey. There's a lot of opportunities that could have been that could have been capitalized on if cotton hadn't been killed at the beginning of Scream 3. Well, you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and there's a video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.